the media has got to get its act together. Yeah, that's the truth. The idea that you could take a Hamas press release, essentially, which spoke to the destruction of a hospital and the 500 casualties and ride with that narrative front page. You rode with that narrative media. You rode with it in such a high profile way that the president of the United States referred to it in his comments. It turns out that we don't really know what the hell happened at that hospital. It seems clear that it wasn't an Israeli bomb, although that's all in a gray area too. There is a hospital there. It wasn't destroyed. There weren't 500 people killed. So you see how insanely wrong all this stuff in war can be. And I've said it before, The you know, it's not my line. It's, it's the most quoted line probably about war. The first casualty of war is the truth. And you saw it in the first day. But the idea somehow that the media doesn't understand that adage, that they don't remember that, the New York Times, the Washington Post, Network News, because it gets clicks, it gets eyeballs, it's scary. Hospital bomb destroyed, 500 people dead. Oh, my God. It is just what we expected. It's horrible. It turns out it's not true. It's outrageous. And then there's no real correction on the part of the media. They do a back step. They do kind of a hundreds killed, uh, unclear how many people were killed, unclear casualties. And indeed, we don't really know what the hell happened in that hospital. And let me just tell you what we do know and don't know. And then I'll read you the Bruni piece real quick because I think it's really excellent. So... In the hospital, oh, I hope I have it here. Stand by. I put it in the show, but doggone it. In the hospital, this is where people that have been told to flee, I think, were gathering for shelter. So it wasn't just injured people there. It was people that were kind of taking refuge in the hospital. So there were more people than normal in that building is what I understand. Video and photographic evidence, along with eyewitness accounts, are providing some clues about Tuesday's massive explosion at that Gaza hospital, which Palestinian officials say killed hundreds. Hamas blames an Israeli airstrike for the blast, a charge the Israeli Defense Forces have vigorously denied. Israel says that a Palestinian rocket launched by a Palestinian militant group called Islamic Jihad exploded in midair and fell on the hospital grounds. The U.S. believes Israel is not to blame based on analysis of, quote, overhead imagery intercepts and open source information. Social media is awash with claims and counterclaims of who was behind the explosion. According to Colina Koltai, a researcher with the open source investigative group that's called Bellingcat, quote, immediately it just became a very confusing situation. You have conflicting claims. All this footage, she says. Here is the available evidence of what we know so far. Many civilians, as Kim has said, had taken shelter at the hospital to avoid ongoing airstrikes. Hundreds of people, including families, who'd come to the hospital to hide from the bombardment elsewhere in Gaza. Israel had conducted thousands of airstrikes in the 12 days since a wave of attacks by Hamas militants killed more than 1,000 Israelis. Church officials and the Palestinian Ministry of Health say that Israeli fire had previously struck the hospital on October 14th. We don't know that that's true. Despite that incident, because the hospital belonged to the church, civilians thought the hospital was the most safe place in Gaza. That's what we were just saying. The displaced Palestinians were in a courtyard outside the hospital at the time of the blast. The small courtyard had several parked cars and a few grassy patches where people appear to have congregated. One video, a live broadcast feed from the news channel Al Jazeera, appears to show what could be a rocket launching from a site west of the hospital. The rocket, or other object, appears to break apart high above the hospital moments before the blast. 
The Israeli Defense Forces claim that radar data shows a barrage of rockets was launched from an area southwest of the hospital at the time the explosion occurred. While the geometry of the Al Jazeera video aligns with that claim, there's no way to independently confirm the radar data. So to review, Israeli say, uh, officials say, look, we looked at the radar data and based on the way that we've got it schemed out, there was a barrage of rockets launched from the area southwest of the hospital. And Al Jazeera video actually bears that out. But the guy in the hospital, Dr. Naeem, let's hear from him. He was in the hospital's operating room the moment the explosion occurred. He said after he heard the blast, he rushed outside to find horrific injuries to the people in the courtyard, including amputated limbs and vascular injuries. He also said that there were no deaths among the hospital's staff, many of whom were working inside the hospital at the time. Quote, luckily, none of our staff was killed, but we had two injured. Photos from the following day also appear to show little damage to the hospital buildings and a relatively small blast zone from the explosion. That damage pattern is inconsistent with a large airdrop bomb, which would leave a crater and create a shockwave that would damage or destroy surrounding structures. It's very clear to me, said a Netherlands-based nonprofit uh, military analyst, it's very clear to me that this is not an airstrike. Israeli bombs typically leave craters 3 to 10 meters in size. They're designed to create a large shock wave that propels shrapnel over a large area. The lack of both shrapnel damage and structural damage to the hospital is inconsistent with all types of commonly used Israeli bombs and artillery shells. Then you get to the death toll. Death estimates vary w widely. They're believed to be in the hundreds. That is plausible, according to the independent review of the situation. This guy's investigated war crimes all over the world, says such a high death toll would be, oh, it'd be toward the extreme high end of anything I've ever seen. But it is plausible, he said, because everybody's crowded into a tight space. Uh, that's all we know. What I just told you. So I go back to the media. You guys run with that crap? You guys run with a totally BS story that you got right out of the email blast that Hamas sent out? Now, I'm not on, I'm not picking sides here, but I'm, I, I, I know I'm not on the side of this shock porn crap that the media is doing when it comes to what's happening there. It's awful enough without the media concocting stuff and going with whatever concoction comes through the editor's desk. I'm talking about major media outlets. This isn't Fox News Channel, you know, which is a major media outlet with a clear bias. Talk about the New York Times, Washington Post, it was ever, everywhere. And as I say, the president referenced it. So uh, that's what we know. I just feel as though the media has really dropped the ball. Look, the media has Jim Avila talked about this. Avila mentioned the fact that there's nobody in Gaza and there's nobody even in that area. And they have most of their foreign correspondents now with all the cutbacks the media has had to endure. They've got them living in London, maybe. NBC has one guy who does, I think, either live in Israel or close by. But I would really watch what I hear. Because I do believe the clickbaity nature of what we're getting out of this area informs the narrative in a perverse way. It is bad enough, as I say, without having to go all clickbaity on it. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.